So it's been a week since I've had my car. Let me show you what's replacing this Camaro. Check it out. There it is. Beautiful. All right, guys, so here it is. This is my 2023 Corvette Stingray. Now, a little bit of backstory on this car. Um, I told you guys I was gonna replace my Camaro in another video with a Corvette more than likely, and that's exactly what I did. So I ordered this car. Uh, I sold the Camaro first. First, I sold the Camaro. Actually, did really good on the Camaro. I bought the Camaro for 46 and sold it for 48.5, I think it was. So that is the reason that you hadn't seen any any more Cam Cam Camaro footage. Is because I had to strip the car down, get my wheels off, and that's and I put them on the Cadillac. So I showed you the the Cadillac with the wheels on. I think it looks better on the Cadillac anyway. Uh, but um, I sold the Cor the Camaro and grabbed this. Well, I ordered this and then it finally came in. So, um, did, did good on the, on the Camaro, sold it. Uh, and then we'll talk about price and everything. Um, I did not pay over stickers just so you know. So I ordered this car in April, at the beginning of April, I think it was, and it came in in the middle of July. So, uh, that is why you didn't see any more footage on the Camaro. And I was waiting on this car. So um, you've already seen the two Teslas I picked up. Truck is still at the house. People asking where your cars are. They're at the house. I got rid of the Camaro. Uh, it was a must because I didn't want two sports cars and I was also running out of room at my house. I didn't want to take up too much of the street. But here it is, man. So I ordered this car and I spec this car the way I wanted to spec. Um, I ended up getting the front and rear spoiler. So that front spoiler and then this rear spoiler. This comes as a package and it's very affordable. This spoiler here. And the front spoiler, it's very affordable because I don't want anything too flashy. I see a lot of guys put a real big carbon fiber spoiler on the front, um, and that's not my style. And maybe I'll put a bigger, sportier one on there for some some purpose. But other than that, um, that combination is only five hundred and ninety-five dollars for both of those from the factory. So I like that it's under warranty, uh, and um, it's a GM product. So. A lot of people change out their spoilers um, to each his own. When you're customizing a car, there's no wrong or right way to do it. There's just really not. So, uh, and by the way, I've had this car for about a week or so with recording this video, maybe a little bit longer than a week. I'm not sure, but I didn't post like delivery day and all that kind of stuff because I really waited a long time to get this car just under four months. Uh, well, not too long, but I waited just under four months uh, and it was worth the wait. So I haven't done any real modifications to it i don't really plan to so when i ordered the the car i got that that kit the um the front and rear spoiler comes as a package and then this color costs one thousand dollars this is called red mist metallic so if it looks familiar it's the color of my truck <laughs> yeah it was the color, color of my truck so back then i was supposed to have this car but when the truck fell apart i just said you know what i'll put this on hold and i'll grab me a convertible uh camaro until i'm until I feel like I want to grab the Corvette because this was always on the table and it's just one of those things. So other options that I added uh, from the factory. So I got the color, $1,000, front and rear spoiler, uh, 600 bucks basically. And I added these right here. These are called radiator grill guards. See the little honeycomb design inside of there? That's called radiator grill guards because this car, the radiators are, radiators are exposed when you don't have those in there. And a lot of people have been getting rock chips and their radiator has been getting damaged. Well, I said, I'm just going to order mine from the factory. That is another $495, basically 500 bucks. Now I did not, you can get those aftermarket for 75 bucks. But when I buy a new car and I'm getting it built to spec, I just want to give it as many things as a factory and I'm willing to pay for it. It doesn't matter. So I think that's my bill sheet. I, I did have forged wheels, right? So I, I'm, I'm working with a company now to try to get these other wheels, these DL6 wheels, but I did have forged wheels. So I told you I ordered this car in April. And um, at that time, my wheels were available, but I wasn't in first in line. I wasn't the next person for an allocation. So by the time I got to the front of the line, it was nine people ahead of me. Uh, the wheels were on restraint. So I originally built this car with some black forged Corvette wheels from the factory and they were only a thousand bucks when you put them in the build but outside of the build they are five thousand dollars so i said with that i can grab any forged wheel that i want to grab 
and it's gonna be even better. So I started working with another company to try to see when they're gonna get them built. Uh, and you know, they're, they're kinda, they're not back ordered, uh, but you know, it's a new wheel. So the wheel looks like a Z06 wheel. Uh, and it just bolts right up to this to this car, obviously, because it's made for the Corvette. So, uh, and that is the build, folks. That is what I did. I went with a coupe. Um, this does come in a convertible. I didn't want a convertible. Pardon the wind. Pardon the wind. It, you know, it's just windy out where I live. But I didn't want a convertible because the main reason to me to get this car, one of the main reasons, this is called the American Ferrari for a reason. Because it is built after... I think it's the 458 Ferrari. It has the engine in the rear. This is considered a mid-engine car. And, you know, why would I want to cover this up? The convertible has this entire area covered. And I didn't like that. And that's not the purpose of me getting this car. I want to see the mid-engine. I want to, that's like the highlight of the car. So, um, as you can see here, there's a big trunk area and there's some snaps and stuff right here. That is because when you get the coupe, you can still remove the top. This top is removable and it goes in the trunk and uh, trunk area. And I will show you that in just a second. Uh, but it does have a frunk area and it is big folks. This is a deep, deep hole in here. I don't know how well this video does it justice, but it is a big hole in there. Uh, that is extremely nice, man. I like being able to put the groceries in the front when I decide to drive this car. Um, and again, I've had this car for about a little over a week, probably at the recording of this video or right at a week or so. And the thing about this car is you have to unlock it basically. Uh, so right now I'm at about 372, 75 miles or something like that. Uh, and um, it's not fully unlocked yet. The power's not there. They want you to break it in. They want you to break it in nicely. They want you to take it through all the gears and drive it regularly without dogging it out too quickly. Uh, and they want you to make sure the car is broken in nicely. So you have to drive it to 500 miles first before you get that real kick of power. And I'm telling you, it's been worth it. Right now, the car is very powerful. Let's let's be clear here. This car is extremely powerful, just as is. But you don't get that full 495 horsepower and 470 foot-pounds of torque, or 490 and 460, depending on if you have the exhaust upgrade. Now, I didn't buy the exhaust upgrade because I didn't feel like it was worth it. I can get aftermarket exhaust for 1,500 bucks, opposed to the GM version that's 1500 bucks and it only adds five horsepower. There are plenty of um, aftermarket exhausts out there that add 11 to 20 horsepower, depending on how far you're willing to go up the chain for spending money. So the only modification I've done is tint the windows. So I got the windows smoked out. I got the small back window 5%, this strip 5%, and these are 25. Even though it looks really dark, those are 25%. And this back window right here is 5%. So yeah, the car is just, it is a blast to drive. We will get in the inside. Yeah, but this is, this is what replaced my, um, my Camaro. This is what I was waiting on to get built. And it got built in a very short time. Some people have waited over a year. There are people that have been waiting two years, but that depends on where you're ordering from. And then also a lot of people are paying over the sticker price. I work with a great dealer um, and she has taken care of me on every bill. She sold me my Corvette, she sold me my truck, and she sold me my Camaro. So three cars down with her and she is an awesome salesperson. And there's other awesome salespeople over there too. I just happen to deal with her because you know I'm getting a great deal. So we'll hop inside, um, but this is it folks. Here is my 2023. And the reason I wanted the 2023 model uh, the 24 model adds some safety features, but it goes up in price. Uh, and that's not really a thing. That's I didn't really care too much about that because obviously this is something that I want to enjoy. So the 24 model adds a bunch of safety features. It adds safety features to, to this already really fast sports car. And a lot of people aren't too happy about it. It adds things like lane departure assist and, you know, all the things that you would think a person would actually want in their vehicle, which me, you know, I'm big on safety. But in this car, um, 
I never thought about that in my in my Camaro, and I'm not really thinking about it in this car, to be honest. Um, the blind spots and everything, I'll talk about that in another video. But this car doesn't have the bad, but it's got worse blind spots. It's got better blind spot than the Camaro. So the Camaro was much more difficult to drive with the top up than this car. So, um... A lot of people have been, you know, questioning you know, whether or not, you know, this is a good, if it's got good blind spots and all these different things. Folks, this car is easy to drive. And mind you, I actually bought the 1LT. Now, the 1LT is considered the base trim, if you will, uh, like the first entry level of this car. And this car it looks exactly like all the other ones. I opted for black leather because in the interior, basically once you move up in trim, you're just spending money on features that you don't actually technically need, like blind spot monitoring, extra cameras all over the car, interior upgrades in different colors and things like that. I didn't need all that. I don't think it's worth it. Um, I, I, I was able to get pretty much a, they call this the American Ferrari for under $75,000 out the door. I think I was under 73 out the door. Uh, Cause remember I didn't pay any markup, so. But we'll talk about price and everything, and I'll show you my window sticker in another video. But um, I did not pay over, uh, and um, I got a sweet deal on this because I was able to build it to the color I want. Because again, this was supposed to be parked next to my Duramax truck, uh, which is ultimately kind of the same color. But you know, hey, it is what it is. Got a white GMC now, it's all good. But let's jump inside, uh, and I'll show you the dash and everything. I love the animation when it starts up, and I'll show you the interior as well. Oh yeah, it does have a soft close, electronic close on the trunk area here. Also, when you open this trunk, it goes up to here. But what you can do is push a little more and it goes up even higher. So it stops right here. So you push it and it goes up a little, it goes up even higher. So you can do whatever you need to do to put the lid in or whatever you're gonna do. And I'll show you that too. I'll take the top off before I go to the house. Here's that soft close where it electronically does it. Check it out. You can kind of hear it close up to get into the car the door handle is under here it's a little rubber grip under there press it the car unlocks and you're in now before i get in um as you can see i got 375 on the dash now for the uh miles so i'm almost at that 500 mile break in um but corvette people know you know this car is a break in but here's the black leather i opted for i could have gotten any interior i wanted pretty much black gray red um but when you go up in trim that's where you can change the interiors to like brown, blue, and all those different things. You can even customize the seat belts. I wasn't, I didn't get it for that. I think this combination is a beautiful combination as is. And the more and more I look at this, I actually love these wheels, these Corvette wheels uh, on here. I think they're really nice. I like them a lot. So um, yeah, I got 375 on here, but we'll get inside. But this is what it looks like in the interior. It's like a cockpit, man. Everything is facing you. And we go over to the passenger side. Um, the passenger has a ton of room. Ton of room as well. This car has more leg room than my Camaro. Trust me, it does. It is a lot of room on here. So um, let's get inside and I'll show you the dash. And then I'll take the top off. And uh, we'll get back on the road. Now, when you get in the car, there's a nice animation. Let's see if it comes up. There it is. Beautiful. It's beautiful. So I'm not going to start the car, but I'm going to let the windows down. Um, so, um, all right. Yes, it's me. Make sure the volume is down. I was testing out the radio in here and gosh, man, the radio, this car has a 10 speaker Bose system and this is the entry level, if you will. Everybody, oh, it's a base mount. This is the lowest trim you could get. So I'm at, two, I'm at 375. So I have another 125 miles to go and this bad boy will be unlocked for stage one. After that, you have to go to 1500 miles and then it unlocks, you can take it on the track. So I'll show you the RPMs too, what I'm talking about as far as unlocking the first stage. But it comes with, um, you can use wireless Apple CarPlay uh, and wireless Android Auto, hotspot, obviously phone, all the stuff that's in a GM product car that we know and love. You got your maps, 
Um, remember that call, that's a subscription if you want to use their maps, but I have my phone for that. Uh, I did pay for that though, to be honest, because uh, sometimes having the maps on your car, I get, a, I get a discount, you know what I'm saying? So that's why some things I'll buy, so I don't have to worry about like, um, you know, if I forget my phone at home, I want to go somewhere, I don't know where I'm going, I got GPS in the car. But you do have all the stuff, Sirius XM Radio, OnStar, your climate, you, and I downloaded these audio books and all this. Alexa's available, Pandora, Spotify, our, these are all applications that are available to this car. Yeah, weather channel, everything's there. So, as far as the controls go, let me get my glasses. Where are my glasses at? Here we go. As far as the controls go, um, this is how you change gears. You pull up on reverse, pull up on drive, you push manual, push neutral, and push park. Crazy, right? Now, there's a gear selector here, right down there. That is how you change the modes on the car, and I will show you that just here in, here in a second. This is your home button right here to go home to the home screen where no matter where you are, and this is your volume right here. You can also push that, you can also push that to mute. Now, um, controls also, let's see here. Auto up, windows down on for, for, for the car. Now you've got your controls for your, your mirrors, your side mirrors, you can adjust those, both of them. This is a nice square uh, or D shape they call it pretty much racing steering wheel and these seats are very comfortable there's three different types of seats by the way there's the gt1 bucket seats which is what i have they recommend you get these if you're going to do a long trip or lots of driving regular driving not so much spirited driving they call it uh these seats are comfortable and the next one up is the gt2 gt2 seats which are somewhat sporty but still a little bit of comfort and then after that you've got your racing seat pretty much um gt3 if you will uh they're called competition seats uh and they're just lots of bolsters on your hips area so depending on how big you are and if you're wondering i'm 6'4 remember so uh, i can fit in this car comfortably i think the biggest person i've seen in this car is 6'7 six, seven. Uh, six foot seven and, and the reason i say that is because this is a low to the ground car so i have to do the old man shuffle is what they call it or the tall man shuffle uh, and you put your butt in first your legs right leg left leg and then close the door and you're in but it does have a power uh steering wheel there's a little button down there. I can bring it towards me and out. I can tilt it up and down. Uh, and then the glove box is there. You open the glove box with that button right there. Lots of room for the passenger and the controls for the car for the air conditioning are on, hit, on here as well. But you also can control it down this little separating divider between you and the, you and the uh, passenger. And you both can control your side of the car if you want to. Passengers down here, I believe, and this is the driver. And it is digital, and I'll show that to you here in just a second. Uh, but um, let's go ahead and crank her up, and then uh, I'll show... Oh, no, my bad. Here's some cup holders. Not that I'll ever be drinking too much in here. And then you've got more, more storage in here. But this is a sports car, folks, so you're not really looking to for storage. But you do have it. There's storage in, in both doors right there. And I'll show you how to open the doors too. Um, here it is right here, let's, let's, let me just show you. This is actually a button, so it's good because just like my Tesla, you push the button and the door unlocks and you can it opens up for you, just like that. So then once you get it open, you can open the trunk here and the frunk. This is how you unlock and lock and it's just that simple. Now the fact that this car has a 10 speaker bowl system, it is incredible, man. There's like, these are like subwoofers in the door, up on the dash, down here. It's, I don't, they're everywhere. I don't know where the heck they are. I'll remove the top here in just a second. Uh, but uh, let me crank it up and then you'll be able to see um, the rest of the dash here for the mode selector. Make sure this is turned down. So this is what the dash looks like. It's a nice digital dash. As you can see there, 375 miles so far on the clock. Cause I have been driving this bad boy in a week. I want to really, I'm only doing that really to get it to the 500. I just want to get it to the 500 and lock that first stage. Uh, and that's it. So this is what the dash looks like. So you can control everything with these right here. So if you watch me roll here, you see how it rolls up? Yeah. Just like that. Now, look at my fuel economy. 28 miles to the gallon, folks. I didn't buy this car for fuel economy, but look at that fuel economy. 28 miles to the gallon. I've taken this car, the reason I have all those miles on here is because I took it on a trip. That's what I did. I took it on, I took it on a trip two times. 
uh, and uh, look at the 25 miles an hour one. Look at the 25 miles. Look at that. 31 miles per gallon. You cannot tell me that's not great. That's incredible, man. And I don't have 450 yet. So, uh, but anyway, fuel economy is phenomenal. I didn't buy it for that, but fuel economy is great. Uh, and this is, I'm just scrolling up and down with that same scroll wheel right there, scrolling up and down. Uh, and there we go. And I keep it right here on the current cycle. I just like keep it on the current cycle. Uh, but you will left and right, you can see your zero to 60. I haven't done anything like that yet. Um, you've got your fuel or your oil, engine oil, transmission, everything right there. And the display design. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much it, man. Um, I kind of keep it right here. Um, I keep it right here on the fuel economy current cycle. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I do. Uh, but yeah, I like it like that. But you can change the modes of the car to race, sport, and track and by uh, twisting this lever right here. So when I twist it to the right, as you can see here, it goes to sport. You notice it changed down there on the bottom center under the P. Change it again. You go to track. And um, that's it. You can you can change it and, and, and the display will change too. Uh, and also it's changing over here on the dash as well. And the, the car is getting louder <laughs> uh, yeah, as you change it. But I kind of been driving in sport. I like sport. Now normally when you change this to track, it changes to a different display, but I don't really like that display. So I, I have it set to always stay like this. So right now, as you can see here, if you don't know, this line right here, the, the break-in period I was talking about, this will change and go all the way over to 6,000 RPM, but right now it's limited to 4,000 RPM because it wants you to break the engine in properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out now. I'm gonna take the top off this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, and take the top off. So I'm gonna open the, the tr trunk area. You can hear it open. Now I'm gonna pause and uh, get out the car. Now in order to take the, to, the top off, you let these down, and one on each side. Now they say to open the doors. I've taken it off without opening the doors. Uh, but it says to open the doors wide like this. Let both down, undo that one. Uh, I've actually done this without doing it this way I've just let the windows down and then uh, so the front half is unlocked now and then you have this button here where you press it and it unlocks that one so now I'm gonna pause and grab this this is super white lightweight it's carbon fiber so it's lightweight I'll take it and put it in the trunk now literally it is off right and it's back here this is how it sits so I haven't snapped it in place yet but once you get the grooves, once it's lined up, you literally snap it in place just like that. And it is on. And you can close it up. Soft close. All right, folks. I have given you a walkthrough of my 2023. Oh my God. Now you see why this is called the American Ferrari? <laughs> it's, it's kind of a thing in the car community. This is called the American Ferrari. <laughs> You can see why. Definitely reminiscent of the 458, right? And the 488. But, uh, and that's where Chevy got the design from. They'll tell you that. So, I'm gonna get out of here, folks. Wow. Yes, I like my new car a lot. Um, and I have been enjoying it for the last week. Yeah, I know I, I got a lot of miles on it already, 375. I wouldn't normally put that many miles on it so quickly, but I had to unlock this thing. So one thing that makes the um, 2023 models special is this right here. It is the 70th year. So you'll see 70th, 70th all over the car. I'll show you that in another spot back here. This is one of those things that makes it special to me. And some of us who wanted it. There's also a limited edition 70th version of this car, but I, I didn't want that one. It only comes in two colors. Uh, and I was like, nah. And Team Corvette. So folks, there it is, man. The beast that replaces. That replaces that beautiful Camaro I had. And I got another treat for you. It's not my car, but I want to show you something if he's willing to show it. Um, I'll bring him over here to my spot where I record at, and we'll drive, we'll go for a cruise, and then we'll stop here. Uh, and then I'll show you uh, what he has. <laughs> 
I mean, one of my buddies, man. He he got he got something great, man. I've had one already, but he got one. It was his dream car, I think it was, and he got it and he loves it. So um I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I will go over price and all that stuff uh in at a later date. But I wanted to go ahead and show you my baby, man. This this car is crazy. It does have sequential um if you wonder how this engine stays cool, well the heat I mean, the air goes in back there. It's like, again, think of a Ferrari. Think of the Ferrari. So, it has sequential blinkers. Uh, I'll give you a, I'll give you a start up right now. Even though it's, it's warm, you get to see how it sounds when it's cold starts, or warm starts at all. Cold start is really loud. I would do a rev test, but it's not necessary. See, so yeah, it has the sequential. All right, guys, I am out of here. It's your man, Jay. Hope you guys enjoyed. I was hesitant on showing the car. I actually showed it to a couple of people already. And they're like, man, you gotta show it, man. Actually, in one of my Tesla videos, I actually showed it a little bit. It's I, I didn't plan on it, but it showed up there. But it's your man, Jay. Hope you guys enjoyed. I am driving the American Ferrari to replace my 23 Camaro convertible. What do you think? See you in the next video. Take care.